Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, we shall be asking and answering one simple question. What is the best loadout for your Imperial Guard Sentinels? This Armoured Walker is an iconic and venerable unit of the Guard. It is one of the most popular vehicles in the faction and it has been part of starter sets for as long as i can remember including the current imperial guard combat patrol it's been around a long time as well and as a result it's constantly been upgraded and had extra options added to it to the point now where you can give it anything from a heavy flamer up to a las cannon and loads of other weapons in between but as cool as this is for newer players and veterans alike, it can be tricky to know what the best weapon is for your chicken walkers. Well, never fear for Mordian Glory is here. I'm going to take you through step by step what I think the best loadout for your scout and armored sentinels is in 10th edition 40k. I suppose that'll do for the mission briefing. No point in messing around any further. You know what? Let's lift up the rock and have a look underneath and dive right into today's episode. Let's begin with a brief overview of what weapon systems you can take for your Sentinels. Now, the good news is that Armour Sentinels and Scout Sentinels can now all take the same guns. Back in the day, Scout Sentinels had access to some, Armour Sentinels others, but they've done away with that nonsense now. Doesn't matter if you like to run around and hide in the bushes like a Scout Sentinel, or just tank it on the face like the meathead that the Armour Sentinel is, you all get the same weapons. As standard, a Sentinel comes equipped with a Militarum multi-laser and a close combat weapon. You can swap that out for an Auto Cannon, a Heavy Flamer, a LAS Cannon, a Missile Launcher or a Plasma Cannon. You can also equip your Sentinel with a Sentinel Chainsaw and you can also equip them with a Hunter Killer Missile. Now all of the Auto Cannons, Heavy Flamers, LAS Cannons, Missile Launchers, Plasma Cannons, all of that is standard issue. For example, your auto cannon is going to have a 48 inch range, two attacks, split skill four plus, strength nine, AP minus one, damage three. Your last cannon is going to have a 48 inch range, one attack, split skill four plus, strength 12, AP minus three, damage D6 plus one. These are the same weapons that you will find pretty much everywhere in the guard. What is unique here is the Sentinel Chainsaw. This is just a straight upgrade over the regular close combat weapon. It increases your attacks from two to three. Your strength stays at six, but you then get an extra AP. So better attacks, better AP. There's no reason not to take it. And that's the important thing to notice here. Because of the way 10th edition points work, there's no point in not taking the hunter killer. There's no point in not taking the central chainsaw. So from this point on, when we're talking about loadouts for the Sentinels, assume that in every instance we have taken all the free gear we can. So that means all the Sentinels and all the missiles. But that covers the accoutrement. Now let us get to the main party. And we'll begin with the Scout Sentinels. It's important to understand that Scout Sentinels primarily aren't going to be taken in your army to do damage. Realistically, the main reason you're taking them is twofold. Firstly, you want to take advantage of their daring recon ability. So you're getting reroll ones on enemy units and you're starting to undo some of the issues that you get with indirect fire. The other reason you would take them is you want them to be almost acting like a durable infantry squad, moving on to an objective, scout moving, doing secondaries, all that kind of stuff. So with scout sentinels, what weapons you put on them, I tend to find is a little bit less important. But if you had to twist my arm, I would say there are three good ones. Coming in third place, I would say is the plasma cannon. The plasma cannon is a decent weapon. It's got a good range, it's got D3 shots, but then it benefits from Blast, but actually becomes quite effective against Hordes because suddenly it's going to have more shots than things like the Multi-Laser and the Auto Cannon and stuff because it gets plus one against the five unit Space Marines, it gets plus two against a 10-man squad, plus three against a 15-man squad, plus four against a 20-man squad. 
The Plasma Cannon has D3 shots, but the Blast is really going to up that. And then it's Strength 7, AP minus 2, 1 damage, undercharged. Or if you supercharge it, it is Strength 8, AP minus 3, 2 damage. Now, for me, I would probably say that you don't want to charge the Plasma Cannon because you don't want to be blowing your own Sentinels up if you can avoid it. So I would actually look at the Plasma Cannon as an anti-infantry weapon. If you're looking for something that can deal with some of the enemy light and medium infantry, the Plasma Cannon really is the way to go. You get the good AP, so it can kind of look after itself. It's not going to be reliant on things like Withering Hail of Fire from the Exterminator. It can just operate as a bit of a lone wolf, and it's still got the strength and AP to be a threat to some of those backfield enemy units. So your opponent might have five light infantry sat on an objective. Scout Center with a Plasma Cannon, it's a good role for that. Of course, don't forget you can supercharge if you do need that little bit of extra punch. And it is only a 1 in 6 chance that you'll damage your Sentinel. Of course, if you take 3 Sentinels and overcharge all the Plasma Cannons, then you are upping your odds of potentially doing a lot of wounds to yourself. Coming in second, I would say, is the Auto Cannon. Now, I like the Auto Cannon on the Scout Sentinel just because it's a Jack of All Trades, Master of None. Strength 9, 8 minus 1, but the big flat 3 damage. Ooh, that is tasty. Got the strength to threaten even vehicles. Not heavy vehicles, but medium and light vehicles. And you've got the damage to really start splatting infantry. Even if it's like a Terminator, you slip a wound past, it's gone. The big problem with the autocan I find, is it's got a little bit of a low rate of fire. It's okay when fielded en masse in a squadron of three Sentinels, it's all right. But the problem is the AP minus one. It's not so self-contained. So I find that the auto cannons are good, jack of all trades, mass of none, but it's not my favourite on scout sentinels. To be honest, if you had to make me pick one good weapon for scout sentinels, the one that I would take every time, it would be the Laz cannon. We live in a meta of big monsters and horrible vehicles. Your ability is everywhere. Even people's infantry these days are running around with all sorts of crazy multiple wounds and reduced damage and all this kind of stuff. So for me, it feels like the last cannon is the weapon that you take just because if you're only going to do a little bit of damage to the Sentinels anyway, if you're really going to get one shot, it might as well be one hell of a shot. It's the classic go big or go home mentality. And so I feel like with the last cannon you've got strength 12 so you can threaten anything in the game you've got ap3 so you're independent and your damage d6 plus one allows you to actually play into the meta which is like i said vehicles monsters and elite infantry i know that the scout sentinel as standard only has ballistic skill 4 plus so relying on that with a one-shot weapon is a recipe for disaster but don't forget that scout sentinels and in fact armor sentinels as well have the regiment keyword so not only can they receive orders from tank commanders because they've got squadron, but they also can receive orders from infantry. So if you've got a platoon command squad with a master Vox, maybe there's a spare order going around because it's part of a supreme command blob, then you can order that sentinel squadron to have plus one to hit. And suddenly having three last cannons hitting on threes actually is a decent threat. And then this kind of feeds into a tertiary role that sentinels can do which is they can distract your opponent if you're running a dawn and some russes and they're your main firepower and they're going to be hurting the enemy the most well naturally they're going to attract a lot of enemy anti-tank and they're durable but ideally the best form of durability is not getting shot by anti-tank this is where scout sentinels and lascans can come in they're going to be more than likely up close in your opponent's face as a result, they're going to be in his field of view. And if they've got three Laz cannons and they're hitting him and they're hurting him, then he might just be tempted to go, well, screw it, I'm going to blow those Sentinels off. I'll get rid of those three Laz cannons. If he does that, not only is that going to protect your other vehicles, but also, again, because Scout Sentinels have got the regiment keyword, you can spend two CP on them, to use reinforcements and bring them back. So the advantage of Scout Sentinels being up close and aggressive with big guns means not only can they fulfill their primary duties of daring recon and also being like action monkeys and getting on objectives, but they can also fulfill their secondary job of doing damage to the enemy and drawing attention onto themselves. And honestly, and I know I might be over-egging the pudding here, but 
I've had a lot of Battlefield experience with Sentinels over the years, and I've found that unless it is a LAS cannon, people just don't see them as a threat. And like I said, you want them to see them as a threat in this case. So for me, the best loadout for your Scout Sentinels is a LAS cannon, a Hunter Killer Missile, and a Sentinel Chainsaw. Whether you take them in a squadron of one or a squadron of three, that would be my go-to. Attention, Guardsmen. This is an announcement by the Departmento Munitorum. Element Games is an official sponsor of the Mordian Glory channel. They offer up to 20% off Warhammer 40k and 10% off full action and other game systems. Use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel. Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Fall out. But that's enough on the Scout Sense. Now let's get over to their Armoured Brethren. And a lot of what I said about the Scouts is going to apply here as well. Although there are some key differences. You are not going to be as focused on doing actions with them. And you're going to be more focused on doing damage. You don't have any way of being a force multiplier as Armoured Sentinels. They don't have an ability like Daring Recon. So really, when you're considering Armoured Sentinels, your priority should be damage dealing and then drawing fire from your big tanks. And then lastly, you want to be using them as a bit of a wall, using them as a bit of a screen, and they are going to be pushing on to objectives as well. The big thing with Armour Sentinels is their ability. Mobile Hunter Killers. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack that targets a vehicle or monster, you can reroll the wound roll. Now that's in shooting and in combat. So it's going to affect everything from your Sentinel Chainsaw to your Hunter Killer to the main weapon on the Sentinel. And it's like you get twin linked. It's really, really powerful. And this is going to give us a few different options for the weapons that we're going to take. Now, starting off at the top, and this would be my go-to. I still think we've got the Laz Cannon there. It's strength 12, it's the AP3, it's damage D61. You know what I'm saying here, guys. If your main ability triggers when you're shooting a monster or a vehicle, having a weapon that is designed to kill those things, it just goes together well. It just makes you better at that job you're trying to do. Better to whole ass one thing than half ass another thing. So to be completely clear, I think that the best loadout for armor sentinels is the same as scout sentinels. Laz cannon, hunter killer, and sentinel chainsaw. However, I want to put forward two honorable mentions that I think are worth your time and consideration. Firstly, the auto cannon again. The autocannon's main disadvantage is that it's only strength 9 and it's only AP 1. So when you are going up against enemy vehicles, it can feel like it hasn't got quite the AP to punch through. It hasn't got quite the strength to punch through. But when we're looking at armor sentinels, we're looking at doing damage. So suddenly the AP isn't going to be so much of a problem because you're probably going to be combining this unit with another one like an exterminator or it's the unit you're shooting at is a high priority one that's going to be the target of fields of fire so you're more likely to be pairing armor sentinels with those ap boosting mechanics you've got in your army and the strength nine isn't so much of a problem because you've got four rerolls to wound you've got twin linked so wounding on fives with four rerolls that's much more likely to go off. It feels less like you're fishing for dice and actually you've just statistically, you can like, this is a fairly reliable strategy that I'm going for now. But then we get to the Maverick, the wild card, the bit of a controversial one. And I know this is gonna be spicy. And a lot of people are gonna throw their hands up with derision and lambast me for saying this, but what about missile launchers? I think missile launchers normally are terrible. I think on the Armour Sentinel, they've got potential i will admit though it's very much a theory hammer part of the video i haven't battlefield tested this i battlefield tested last cans and also cancel the cows come home but this launch is a bit of a spicy one the reason why i'm saying this launches is because their strength nine 
and normally that's a problem because they can't get through armor reliably but with the full re-rolls thanks to mobile hunter killers what we said about the auto cannon also applies to the crack rocket it's also ap minus two so it's fairly self-contained it doesn't need help from fields of fire and withering hail to be able to threaten enemy armor even if they're in cover you've still got enough punch to knock them down a peg Damage D6 is a bit swingy, but there is the potential if you've got a command reroll in your back pocket to be able to make sure that you get the damage that you want. The big thing here, though, is then you've also got the frag version. Frag version has blast. Now, if you're shooting against a big horde of enemy units, you could be looking at potentially 3D6 plus 12 frag shots from... A unit of armor sentinels if you're shooting something like a 20-man blob of light infantry hell even if you're shooting into just a unit of like 10 any kind of infantry you're going to be looking at 3d6 plus 6 that's decent reliability there blast is a very 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 good rule any unit that has access to it is a good unit in my book but on top of all of this what really gets crazy is for some reason the missile launcher on the armor sentinel has heavy now heavy if you stay still gives you plus one to hit and that combines with take aim which gives you plus one ballistic skill so suddenly you could have your armor sentinels if they set up on a firing lane and they start getting into just a straight up duel with an enemy vehicle they could be hitting on twos now let's just take this a step further but wait there's more you know you know what i like to say guys what if we combine our sentinels with scout sentinels? What if we don't think of this as a one or the other situation? Why not both? If you have a scout sentinel that can daring recon an enemy monster, and then your armor sentinels can take aim and stay still and shoot to the enemy monster or vehicle, you'll have unit of armor sentinels with crack rockets that will be hitting on twos, rerolling ones, and then full rerolls to wound. If it's a big enemy monster like that, there's nothing stopping you from after using the scout sentinel using fields of fire and suddenly those crockets are going to be ap crack rockets going to be ap minus three there's just a lot of opportunities there to get damage over the line and i think it turns armor sentinels into a little pricey but a genuine anti-tank threat and like i said missile launchers have got that flexibility where thanks to blast they can do anti-infantry as well so in conclusion last gallons are the best Auto cannons are a good backup, and then you might want to think about plasma on your scouts or missile launchers on your armoured. But all of this is like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you a fan of the Lance Cannon Sentinel, or do you think there is a better weapon option out there? Also, what is your favourite kind? Do you prefer the scout or do you prefer the armoured? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks you get everything from a badge next to your name custom emojis but the big one is access to the mordian glory discord server an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members it's always popping off in the mg discord we've got channels for army lists hobbying tactics stories and even a pretty spicy meme section as well for all you greenhorns that wanted to see the mordian glory hall today is a lucky day And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and Patreons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do more doing glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members. So thank you guys so much. And last, but certainly not least, I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreons. These are the War Masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the Call of Duty. 
So a massive thank you to Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, August Vardy, and the Tommies. Thank you guys, your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now, thank you for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>